Hey guys, I wanted to tell you guys about why I love soft edges. And first, let's look at a couple masterful paintings of soft edges, okay? I just found this artist recently. I think he's from Japan. And I'm gonna botch his name, so I'm just gonna let you look at it. But look at these beautiful paintings of these cats with the soft edges. And clearly he's used a lot of water, but he's been able to maintain a lot of control. And it's almost like he told the the water and the paint where to go in these paintings and I just love them and some of the techniques that I'm going to tell you about today will include um, some of these techniques that he used for soft edges and also some of the techniques I use for soft edges and the point of me telling you this is so you can see why you need to watch my video about soft edges and I'm gonna give you by the way in this video I'm gonna talk about five different ways that you can create soft edges. There's lots of different ways and lots of different techniques to create soft edges. So I want to share those with you. Okay, now, uh, here's another technique where um, you'll see uh, me demonstrate in today's video where I used almost dry paper, but it was just moist enough to uh, maintain the details. And look how soft his eyes are. And I made a point to make his eyes really soft and it just really makes the painting look more attractive. This painting I did quite recently and my whole idea was to make a beautiful, soft, romantic looking painting. And the way to do that is to have soft romantic edges. It's all about your edges in a painting like this and having beautiful light, of course. But you can see here's a hard edge along the nose and there's a soft edge at the back of that yeah, see right there, the back of the ear has a nice soft edge, very nice soft edge there where I painted both sides at the same time um, with thicker paint in my brush for the cat's dark areas. And um, see, I scrubbed out a little bit right here by the tail, you can see. And then where the shadow meets the tail, I kept that soft as I painted both sides of that line. If you learn to create more soft edges in your paintings, especially if you're, you're painting animals, you will take your paintings to the next level. I'm calling this my dry on dry technique. So okay, I'm, I'm turning the paper Hi. sideways so I can see Hi. my edge. Okay, so I've got a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue in my paintbrush and I'm just painting along the side of the cat's face. Okay, so now I've gotten some ultramarine blue in my brush and I'm going to go along this edge of the cat. And as you can see for this particular area, I just wanted to demonstrate this technique. I am leaving some little pure white dry areas, just little tiny bits to, it's almost like the cat is backlit and that it has that pretty little um, white glint along the furs along the edge of the cat's profile. And so I just wanted to demonstrate that too here of, different ways that you can use this technique. So that's obviously a hard edge right there, but you can see where I painted the ultramarine blue right up to the edge of the burnt sienna mix. And both sides are very wet. And what happened with this later when it dried, it really didn't make a neat fur texture. Okay, here I am putting in some clear water in my moist area. And I just wanted to show you how the water will separate the paint and kind of create a clear, lighter area. This technique is really fun. I used this in my, if you saw the my last Siamese kitten painting, I did this. I put in really dark ears and then I was like, oh, they look too pasted on. It doesn't look right. So I took a spray bottle and I sprayed them and it really made a nice soft, it changed the line in a really subtle way, but also important enough to where it made the line look a little more sophisticated than just being a painted on line. Okay, so let's go back and look at this first painting after it's dried and look at that edge. Doesn't that, that would make a great fur edge, right? So I just think that's a really interesting effect. Okay, now I'm gonna show you another way to get a soft edge, which is to use a scrubber. And I've talked about scrubbers a lot. You guys know already this technique, but just 
for the purpose of this video being all about soft edges, I cannot leave this technique out. And I use this a ton because it's really, you can really control your soft edge, but also um, get a nice soft edge. So I have a little bit of clear water in my brush and I'm going onto dry paper and I'm just lightly scrubbing along the edge and also a little bit over the edge just to keep it all even so it doesn't get a buildup of wall of paint where it has a hard dark line. I don't want that. So you scrub over that entire area, but you scrub the most where you want it the lightest. This technique is where I'm gonna wet the entire area and then just kind of work into it. So I'm taking my Alvaro Castig net brush and right there, I just wanted to demonstrate how when you have painted something like the word A-L-L, all, it was still a little moist, but it had very hard edges and I just went over it with a moist brush. And if you wait till it dries to the right consistency, almost dry, but still wet, you can wash over it and it'll just soften it just enough to give it an, a more poetic feel. And see, I'm even scrubbing over it more and it's still staying there, but it's now it's really softened. So just keep that in mind too. If you are painting, 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 and you look at your painting, you say, this has just got too many hard edges. Even when it's completely dry, just go over it lightly at first with water over the entire thing. And then if you want to soften it more, you can scrub a little harder and a lot of the paint will stay in place, but it'll soften a lot of it. Okay. So I am putting in about cream consistency paint, very thick paint, really as thick as I can possibly get it for the most part into this moist uh, background paper. And you can see it's all wet. It's completely wet. And this is a good technique to use like for stripes, especially if you're working in a large area and you can make a really thick stripe. Uh, like, oh, look at that. Oh, that's bleeding too much. See, I'm going to show you a fix for this. See, that just bloomed out too much. The paint was the paper was too wet. I was like, ah, ah, oh, no. But what you can do uh, if you want to try to salvage it, you might not be able to, but you can try. Um, I'm going to go in with really um, a, a very wet brush. I see I'm showing you how much moisture is in my brush here um, on my palm of my hand. It's like really wet. My brush is really wet and I'm just going to put some very uh, wet, wet water. <laughs> of course, water's wet. I'm going to put wet, very wet water, clear water down against the edge of the cat and let that water push into the thick paint and it will it it'll push into that thick paint and push that paint back across the line and and almost like corral it it like pushes the paint over so if you make a puddle of fairly a fairly wet puddle against already wet paint like this and you really do have to experiment with this to see what i mean it'll push that paint back to the edge of wherever you put that puddle. Okay, just to demonstrate this in a different way, I'm going to show you how I use this technique to make interesting furry stripes. And you can see here how I'm putting thick lines of black down and in between those lines, I'm putting pools or puddles of water between the black stripes. And do you see how it's pushing into those stripes? The water pushes into the stripes and creates little tiny currents that move through the thick paint that creates a very interesting fur texture. So you can imagine if you use this technique when you're painting tabby cats or leopards. In fact, I'll show you here. See, this is a leopard I did and I used this technique a little bit when I was painting like for example, for this little spot, that little spot, I would put water on both sides of the black stripe so that the water would move through the black stripe or whatever color stripe really. Um, hopefully the more granular your paint is that you use, the better this technique will work from my experience and see, um, I've sped this up times 2000. So I just kept toying with this and at this point, it's kind of losing the effect, and so it's kind of getting overworked at this point, but I think it looked really good. You could really see that fur texture effect at the beginning when I first did it, and it was really fresh. And here it is at the very end, and again, after I let it dry, those currents showed up again.
So I just continue to add really thick paint to this cat. And that's the thing, when your paper is really wet, you can continue to work into it. You can lift out, you can add dark paint, you can um, blot, you can put a puddle of, of clear water and see if it'll spread that, um, that, spread that paint away from the area that you want to have lighter, and you can just play with it. Uh, so as long as your paper stays wet, then you, you can keep working. And so I just put in some little eyeliner and a pupil just to show you guys, you still have quite a bit of control when you have your paper this wet. It's like medium wet. And this area was totally black where the mouth is and look how much control I'm able to have even though my paper is quite wet. I'm just soaking that paint up into my brush and it, I got back to almost clear paper there and that's a nice soft edge for the mouth. So um, I just think that created some nice interest. So you can see how much paint I was able to lift. Now, part of my success with that technique is the kind of paint I used, which is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and some lamp black. And those are all colors that lift really nicely because they're quite granular. So the more granular in general your paint is, the better it will be at not staining the paper and allowing you to lift that paint out. So you can create these interesting textured looks and these soft edges and rework it and, and lift it up especially when um, you're, you keep working on the paper before the paper dries. So we're looking at all these now that they're dried. Look how cool that edge is, that fur edge along the right side of this first cat we did. I just think that looks cool. And I like his ear where there's like this little sliver of white along his brown ear to, okay, for this cat, we're gonna focus on the technique of lifting out edges and basically it's like blotting away color. So I'm painting in a mix of my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I just watched a video by someone on YouTube and they were talking about a good cheap alternative to Arches Cold Press. So I will put a little um, side note up here about that paper. So as you can see, I'm just starting this cat and I'm putting um, brown on the cat's face and a bluer background but my point of doing this is I want to show you how you can kind of just gently lift up along the edge that you want to keep soft and look at that nice soft edge I could just stop right there which I didn't stop because I, I was just trying other experimental things as you'll see but right here I could have stopped and had a very nice soft edge and just left it alone I love painting on paper when it's about this consistency your lines totally retain their shape yet they just bloom out just a tiny little bit to stay soft. Just gorgeous. Um, and the trick is to have pretty um, medium damp to almost dry, but not quite paper and then cream consistency paint in your brush. And then you can get these beautiful dark lines, but they stay soft. That cat looks totally ridiculous. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go and experiment, have fun. Don't take it too seriously. Just try some of these techniques out. Let me know if any of them were helpful and what you thought of them and what was your favorite technique. I would love to hear from you guys. So thanks so much for watching you guys and please like this video, leave me a comment and subscribe and hit the little bell button so that you don't miss any of my uploads which i upload about once to twice a week and if you're interested in learning from me in a more in-depth way then you can head over to my patreon and check out my offerings there bye you guys have a good week i have this great video idea that i want to share with you guys but i can only do it with my son here Parker, are you going to be a good boy and let mommy make this video? Hi, you guys. So I am hiding in my room right now. <laughs> I'm hiding in my room right now. My husband's on the phone. It's Sunday, so it's kind of crazy around my house. But I had an idea to make this. Okay, you have to be quiet. <laughs>